Today, I'd like to continue on our discussion on EMC consideration. Today, this task series will be the B series. Okay, the earlier series, A series, I have put the video link under the description. So please go through that video before you actually come to this video. In this A and B series, we are going to discuss the effect of shielding against magnetic field coupling. Okay, so this will be the part 15 series discussion on EMC. All the video link under EMC, I have put under the description. So please go through the video if you're keen to know more about EMC. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to help this channel by pressing the like and subscribe buttons. Guys, I really need your help. Thank you so much, guys. We are going to study the effect of shielding against magnetic field coupling. In the A series, I have derived this equation. This is the victim conductor 2. Okay, and then I calculate this is the amount of noise that coupled over from conductor 1 to conductor 2 with shielding effect. Okay, again, I like to discuss the effect on two outcome. One will be low frequency, another one will be on high frequency. Okay, let's take a close look on low frequency first. Okay, at low frequency, okay, this omega, which is equal to 2 pi f, is very small because frequency is small. So therefore, for low frequency, I can actually ignore this j omega ls term. So if I ignore this j omega ls, I have rs over rs, which is equal to 1. Therefore, my outcome at low frequency is actually equal to j omega m12 i1, which is denoted over here. As for high frequency, you can see that this term j omega ls is very much significant as compared to rs because frequency is high. So therefore, this term is much, much higher than rs. And hence, for high frequency, I will ignore the rs, which result in this term over here. So from here, I see common term j omega. I cancel off. This is finally what I can achieve at high frequency. Okay, so this is the noise that couple over from conductor 1 to conductor 2 with shielding effect at low frequency here and high frequency here. Okay, however, okay, remember this is actually the victim. Okay, this is the noise that couple over which is called Bn. Okay, and the noise that fall over the victim, I would like to denote them as B prime N. And again, I like to assume the two resistor is exactly the same. And I would like to just simplify the equation. Okay, so the noise that coupled over fall on the victim will be this term divided by two. Since the two resistor, I assume it to be the same. Same wise for high frequency, I just need to do a divide by two. Okay, so this is the noise that induce over to the victim after couple from conductor one to conductor two. Next, okay, so this is exactly what I've shown it to you on the previous slide. Okay, I just want to put them together so that you can take a closer look. Okay, next, what I'm going to show it to you is without shielding. Okay, so this without shielding, we have calculated the effect much earlier on, and I put them alongside so that you can actually take a close look. Okay, let's compare term by term. Okay, at low frequency, okay, you can see that there is no effect at all because the term is exactly the same with or without the shield. Hence, with this, we conclude that okay, at low frequency, even we put a shielding, okay, it does not going to help us on the effect. Okay, but as for high frequency, you can see that there is some shielding effectiveness. In conclusion, okay, we conclude that Shielding is only effective at high frequency. At low frequency, okay, there is not much help at all. This is the outcome. Okay, so this is the frequency versus the noise that induce over. Okay, so at low frequency, 
okay, you can see that it's a function of frequency. When frequency increase, okay, the noise also increase. So therefore, when frequency increase, the noise increase okay, until it reach the high frequency. Okay, you can see over here, this is without shield and this is with shield. Okay, and then you can see that this is the point, okay, which is RS over LS. Okay, so let's take a look here. So when you actually with a shield, okay, can you see that this RS over 2LS is actually reduced? Okay, so which means that when you actually with shield, this term is actually shift to the left. So which means that this saturation effect happen much faster when you actually have a shield. Okay, you understand what I want to say? So when you actually have a shield, instead, let's say at this point, it actually shift to the left because you have a shield and with a shield, you actually reduce the cutoff frequency. So it means okay, above the shield cutoff frequency, okay, the pickup voltage stop increasing and remain constant. Okay, so after high frequency, okay, you can see that this is a DC term, okay, it don't increase anymore. Okay, so the frequency plot is shown in the figure below. Okay, so for shielding against magnetic field to be effective, okay, it must operate at least five times the shield cutoff frequency. Okay, so which means that this is the cutoff frequency, you must operate it at five times okay, of this frequency in order to have the shielding effectiveness. We know that if we want to reduce the magnetic field coupling, okay, we need to reduce the B and we also need to reduce the area. Okay, over here, I'm going to describe how we actually reduce the B. Okay, can you still remember on the A series, I told you that when there's a current flow on conductor one, magnetic coupling actually occur, there will be a coupling coefficient M12. Okay, so this is the coupling coefficient. And also there will be another coupling coefficient from conductor one to the shield. And again, when there is a coupling coefficient from conductor one to the shield, okay, it induce a voltage which result a current flow in the opposite direction of the source current. And because of this coupling actually also occur from the shield to the conductor two. So therefore you can see over here, the B actually reduced because there is some cancellation effect. Okay, so this is what we need to have shielding against magnetic field coupling. Okay, next, okay, in order to prevent magnetic field radiation from the circuit, okay, the shield must be grounded at both ends and the return current must flow from B to A in the shield instead of in the ground. So what does this mean? Okay, let's take a look over here. So this is a source. Okay, so the source current flow this way. Okay, and then they flow through the R1. Okay, so typically they will flow to the common ground area and back to the source. So over here, you can see that the effective area is the whole chunk of this piece here. Okay, so what we can actually do is we supply a return path. Okay, you can see that this part is a supply return path. Again, let me illustrate with an example. Okay, this is the source current. They flow. Again, they flow through R1. So now, instead of flowing through from B to A, it actually flow from this IS and finally through the shield and finally provide a return path back to the source. Can you see that the effective area now is here and here? So can you see that the effective area also reduced dramatically? So this is how we can counter magnetic field coupling with shield. With this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please like and subscribe. Thank you so much, guys.